Welcome to another edition of Double Dog Treasure Hunters. Today we're going to do a video on shipping, packaging, where do I get my material from, how do I package this, how do I package that, a few little things we picked up over the years. It's a good video if you're trying to learn how to ship or maybe you'll learn something new if you've never shipped before. So we've had a lot of people want to know how do you do this, how do you ship this, how do you do that, how do you protect that. So we're going to cover it all in this video. So the first step is materials. Um, you're going to need you can get materials anywhere. If you don't want to buy new materials, believe me, just go behind dumpsters of places like Staples, Best Buy, Walmart, grocery stores, that kind of stuff. And you can find a lot of free packing and shipping materials. For us and the time it takes for me to do that kind of stuff, it's not practical. Um, we like fresh, clean stuff, so we don't mind spending money for packing materials. So as you can see here, we have a large selection of boxes to choose from, boxes, um, various sizes. We've got big boxes, little boxes, we've got tubes, we've got poly mailers, we've got flat rate boxes, we've got big mailers, we've got little mailers. And where we buy most of our supplies from is eBay, believe it or not. eBay is probably the cheapest place to get boxes, to get bubble mailers, to get a lot of stuff. As long as it's not big and bulky, it's probably the cheapest places. So let's just take this box right here. It's a uh, common size shipping box, six by six by six. It folds down like this. You know, it's a little six by six by six box. A lot of stuff gets mailed in that. Um, I can get a hundred of these for $29 with free shipping on eBay. So there's a seller on eBay, and I'll tell you, I'm gonna give a shout out to this seller on eBay because we buy a lot of stuff from them. There's two sellers actually, three Bs. T H R E E B, I think I believe is username, and there's another one called Echo Swift. Them two sellers usually always have the lowest price, and when we order from them, it's usually the next day. If I order before 12, it's usually at my door the next afternoon. So them two sellers, I bought a ton of stuff from them, shipping packing supplies. Next day usually, if it's not the next day, it guarantee will be there the second day. So it's real good. The thing with shipping, if you're doing a lot of shipping, you want to stay ahead of what you need. You don't want to get behind and go reach for a box you don't have and then you're like, oh man, I'm out of that box and then you're forced to go to somewhere like Staples. So Staples probably sells the same box. So I get 100 of them for $29. Do the math on that, that's what, 29 cents a piece? If that, sometimes they even run better deals than that. Staples is probably gonna charge like a buck, buck 30, buck 50 on that same size box with tax. So 29 cents or a buck 50, do the math. Um, these are size, these boxes are some smaller ones. These right here are even cheaper. They're probably 13, 14 cents. It's like a six by four by two. I got some four by four by fours. Um, flat rate boxes. Take advantage of flat rate boxes. Flat rate boxes, what I'll say about flat rate boxes is this. Um, there's a flat rate number to post office charges for boxes. And sometimes it's practical to use them on heavier items that'll fit and sometimes it's not practical. Sometimes priority shipping will be cheaper than a flat rate box on something you could fit. So you sort of have to figure that out on your own, you know, cheapest option on shipping. Especially if people are doing free shipping. A lot of times we charge for shipping, actual cost. So we'll go in the office and I'll show you some more supplies that we use and then we'll show you a little bit of shipping. So the more supplies, we have packing peanuts. We use a lot of packing peanuts. And I know some of you probably are like, man, that is a giant size bag of peanuts. That's actually 14 cubic foot. You can order them from like Uline and stuff like that. The problem with ordering from Uline on boxes and that kind of stuff is they charge you shipping and their shipping rates are very expensive. So I'll give you an example. There's a box I couldn't get on eBay. So I ordered 200 of them from Uline and it come out to, I think like 120 bucks. But then when they told me to ship it, it was like $84. And literally it shipped from two states over for me. $84 for 200 boxes. So that's the problem with Uline. Oversized stuff, big bulky stuff. I don't know how the eBay sellers that do shipping supplies are able to sell so cheap, but they've been the cheapest method, hands down, for me for new boxes. A bag like this from Uline, you can order from Uline, but the problem with Uline is that bag right there is probably going to cost you more to ship it than what you can buy that bag for. So check your local area and see if you can find a local supply store to sell packing and shipping stuff. We have two of them within a 30 mile radius. And then some of them will even deliver, even if they're farther away. If you order a big enough order, say you order $500 of stuff, because they're always delivering. So they'll just add you to their run. So like this bag right here, this 14 cubic foot of peanuts, I can get for $22.15, I believe, locally. 
and we look we're really lucky because one of our shipping stores is literally a mile down the road this bag right here if you were to go to staples staples sells these little tiny bags i think they're like two or three cubic feet i think they're like ten dollars or eight dollars they might be seven dollars i don't know but seven dollars so that's basically about eight or nine of staples bags right there in one 22 dollars i can go down there and get them um i like these packing peanuts versus like the cornmeal ones and if you look these are a little harder peanuts. They make cornmeal ones. The problem with the cornmeal peanuts is when you push them, that one, see that one breaks. But when you push the cornmeal, they just flatten out. They never expand back. So when you package something heavy or boxes getting bounced around on the way to its destination, your packing peanuts are real thin by the time they get there. So you lose like three quarters of your packing material from just the packing peanuts smashing down and never expanding. So I don't, I, I personally do not like cornmeal peanuts. I refuse to use them. Um, I've tried them in the past, but they're the worst possible peanuts that I've ever used. These right here are really good because they won't break down. I mean, they might break in half like that, but other than that, they're not going to compress like them cornmeal peanuts do. Next thing, tape. Tape. What kind of tape do you use? Tape. What kind of tape should I use? So most of you know what this is. This is a tape gun. Um, we used to use these a lot, not so much anymore, and I'll show you why. But these are perfectly fine if you're starting off taping. Buy you a tape, a, a big gun like this, and then buy your rolls by the box. You can find them on eBay too, you know, a case of 24, a case of 48. Buy in bulk, it's cheaper, you're going to use it. Um, it just makes more sense than to buy three rolls of staples or, or wherever, buy three rolls at a time. If you're going to use it and you're going to be shipping, invest a little bit of money in your shipping supplies. It'll pay off tenfold. You won't be running out. It'll save you trips to the store, local stores, buying that kind of stuff. But tape guns. Now, for you big sellers, I don't know if you um, you big shippers. And I'm, when I say big shippers, I mean you're shipping 20, 25 packages plus per day average. I mean, you're shipping. You know, you guys want, might want to look into a machine like this. This is called a Better Pack 555E. It's a tape gum dispenser. So the difference between that tape and this tape is, if I can find a roll, is they come on rolls like this and they feed into the machine you set them up in the machine if you look inside the machine the roll sets up it goes into a feeder and how this machine works is it's got numbers on it the numbers is how long a piece of tape you want so if i want a nine inch piece of tape i just hit that nine button and it shoots me out a nine inch piece of tape it's wet on the bottom sticky gluey it's moisture, it, uh, it gets its glueiness. The tape comes dry, but then you fill this up with water, this little water holder right here, and it'll moisten the tape. And then you just stick that right on your box. So, you know, it's got the plus and minus. You can add inches, you can subtract inches, or you can use this, the numbers that it comes preset. But two, okay, so two times nine, six. Boom, so it gave me 12 inches. So all it does, the two times button just multiply that number. So on six, it gave me a 12 inch piece of tape. If I want 90 inch piece of tape, I hit two times at 45. So you get the gist. You know, very simple, and I'll tell you why we went in this machine. We were spending probably three to four hours on Monday mornings. So we don't ship on, um, we don't ship after two on Friday. We don't ship Saturday or Sunday. So I was coming in Monday morning, we'd have 50, 60 orders from the weekend, if not more. And we would sit here, two or three of us sit here with tape guns, and it'd take us hours, taping boxes, that kind of stuff. So somebody told me about this machine, I went up invested in it. And if you're gonna buy one of these, stay away from the refurbished. Let me mention that. We messed up, bought a refurbished one, and I wound up replacing it like two months later. Buy a new one, it's worth the investment, the warranty, everything. These machines aren't cheap, they're about 11, 1200 bucks on Amazon. Um, you can find them on eBay too. I, we bought ours on Amazon because that was the best deal at the time. But this machine right here probably saves me on a 50 box order, probably saves me it's a quarter of the time using this versus a tape gun. Because what happens with a tape gun? You pull the tape stick out, you run across the box, you get it, it sticks back to itself, or you get it stuck and then you fix it, or it's not sticking. Or this just comes out 18 inch, man, I slap it on the box, push it down, it's done. And we'll show you, we'll show you a box in a minute. But this this machine, worth every dime I've ever spent. Love that machine. Cannot imagine shipping without that machine. Bubble wrap, another key component. Bubble wrap. Get it local if you can. It'll shave you. I mean, you could probably find it on eBay. I doubt you're going to find this for free shipping. You might be able to. And bubble wrap, they make in numerous different sizes. This is a big bubble here. 12 inch wide. It's perforated every 12 inches. So you can rip it off like that. 12 inch piece of bubble wrap. 
Um, they make it wider, two foot size. They make small bubbles, 12 inch, 24 inch. I mean, this stuff comes in any size you want. Packing peanuts and bubble wrap, we get local. Because I can't find a better deal. Um, boxes, eBay, 100% eBay. Can't find a better deal. Very rarely we use Uline unless we can't find something. But that covers packing material, supplies. So now we've talked about shipping supplies a little bit. We'll talk about labels here in a little bit. But we're going to show you how to pack some things. So we actually got a couple different items just to show you how we pack. Um, we got a plastic cup, but we're going to represent this as glass. So let's pretend it's a glass glass cup for argument's sake. We got a couple small items right here. And then we got a G.I. Joe Adventure Team toy. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the glass first. Um, first thing we're going to do, we got a box and a save time. We've already got our supplies out here. Save time for video purposes. Um, we've got our box out here, so we'll go over to our Better Pack machine, and we're gonna, and I'll show you how this machine works. So, like I said earlier, um, you just hit the number you want. Three, eight, Twelve. This piece of tape goes right like this, and it just goes over top of that. So, I mean, you could put as much tape or as little tape as you want. I sort of overdo it. I hit the repeat button. If you didn't notice, I hit the repeat button. I'm doing the same size piece of tape again. So, I put my tape right there. Got my box tape. See how quick and easy that was with a tape gun? You'd probably just finish right about now. So we got the tape on it. Then we come over to our trusty packing peanuts. And we actually got them in totes to make it easy with a little scoop. And we'll put some peanuts on the bottom. Very simple procedure. Make sure you cover, you know, you, it depends on the item. You have to judge your item, how fragile it is. Um, how fragile it is. I mean, if it needs a little bit of extra protection, just take the time and add it because that's a lot easier than you getting the item getting to the destination and then getting tore up. So protect your items. I mean, if you're selling, if this thing is a $300 cup, what's the point in hurry up to get it boxed up and get to its destination and then it'd be broke? Um, so it makes no, it makes no sense. So take your time, do add a little extra protection. So what we do on a glass like this, like I said, we're pretending it's glass, even though glass is the first thing we're going to do is we're going to side we're going to use bubble wrap we're going to use cardboard save your extra piece of cardboard because they come in handy so on a glass i'd probably bubble wrap it first like so put a piece of bubble wrap over it and this is where your tape gun would come in you'd have to use a tape gun on uh, something like this you don't need a lot just a piece of tape to hold it. Yeah. Tape it the right way. Cut off any excess. If you got excess, if you got room in your box. So the best way to ship glass, glasses, plates, that kind of stuff, is to not only add bubble wrap. But take you a piece of extra cardboard and cut it to size. This is a scrap piece of cardboard. And don't forcefully do it, but gently just put it over top of it like that. See that? That's just a little bit more protection. This is where this machine will come in handy again. So I'll just hit six and I'll slap a piece of tape over it. Like so. And we've got just a little bit more protection. So that that actually is going to protect it, you know, get some weight on the box and push the pack of peanuts, right? So we got that in there. We'll put it in our box that... So, I would probably get a little bit of a bigger box if I was actually going to ship this. So we've got it in there. We've got pack of peanuts on the bottom. Um, then we'll take some more pack of peanuts. Put it on top. Now you don't want to overdo the packing material where you're forcing it down or the box is bowed out, just so it sits flush. See so that's flush. And then we just come back over here. Oops, that's a little too small piece of tape. Slap the tape on here. Bam. Now you're ready to ship. Ship and print. All right? Piece of glass protected. One, uh, one extra step you can go, you can find these labels on eBay, Amazon, all that stuff. eBay, they're really cheap. 
like 500 of them for like 10 bucks and they just they say different things they got up arrows you know that's one that says this side up handle with care that one says fragile handle with care thank you that one says this size up fragile and just slap one of them stickers on there so that's just a little extra you know maybe the guy at the post office having a bad day and he's trunking packages and it comes across your box and goes handle with care fragile thank you okay hey be careful with this one you know it just adds a little bit of extra you know protection i know it's a sticker but they work trust me they work because most of the time them guys are on trucks and they're like that they're just chunking stuff um but adding that sticker maybe the guy having a bad day sees that and he doesn't have a bad day with your package now we're gonna do now we're gonna do some small stuff so the small stuff you have to look at and determine is it breakable is it not breakable how much protection i need so this is all your own judgment and you'll learn this stuff over time so this is a boat part it's a little gasket head gasket it's made of rubber it's not going to break it's not going to get tore up i mean it's going to be hard to tear this little piece up it really is so that something like that we would throw in a bubble mailer and that's fine i got a couple different sizes so i got a little blue one right here fold that like that um actually fold that like that stick it in that little bubble mailer watch how easy this is take that off boom ready to go right package done all got these print a shipping label so right the part number on that go all right so now we got another little piece that thing stuck to me okay so there's a different one there's a thermostat it's got some plastic it's another boat part it's got some plastic in it that that can, plastic can get crushed and cracked um got a little bit of solenoid in it some other stuff so that right there i'm probably going to stick in a box the reason being i'll stick in a packing envelope and something heavy goes on top of it and hits it that plastic's going to crack um, so I get a little four by four box. I'm gonna ship that little bow part, four by four by four. Um, same thing, this machine right here, real handy, fast, quick, easy. Watch how quick I do this. Boom, done. So this right here, I'm gonna take a little bit of pack of peanuts, just a little bit. Put it in there, put that bow part in there like that. Get you a little bit more. Not Remember what I said, don't overfill it. Don't put pressure on it. And I'm going to go, like I said, I overkill on tape a lot of times. And that boat part's done. What'd that take, five seconds, 10 seconds maybe? All right, so that's the boat part, um, our thermostat, little box. So instead of going through this and wasting more time showing you the same thing, this right here, I'm probably not gonna put cardboard over. I'm gonna get a big enough box. I'm gonna put packing peanuts below it on top of it and on the sides and i'm gonna slap a fragile sticker on it that's what i'm gonna do i overkill shipping it pays off trust me check our feedback out on ebay people say oh man the shipping is awesome the shipping is awesome because i don't mind spending that little bit more extra expense to ensure stuff gets their safety and people have an enjoyable experience because the last thing you want is to sell something somebody's been looking for for a long time and they get to them and be crushed because of your laziness and shipping is that worth justifying saving a few pennies not to me it's not maybe your answer is yes but to me it's not so you got to judge your own stuff how you like to do it um, but for us i don't mind spending that couple a little bit more money with that said we're going to show you some shipping now all right so with shipping we got we got two things we did we did a little thermostat i can't ship the fake glass because we had nowhere to ship it to that's just a demonstration purpose only and we got the little gasket so with shipping um i'll tell you this shipping supplies laser jet printers for shipping the reason being is if you use color printers and all that stuff, you're going to spend a small fortune on ink versus a laser jet printer that has, um, uh, what do you call it, uh, toners in them. Toners, it's going to save you a lot of money. We actually have, we used to ship with a laser jet. Now we use that more for printing, and we ship with the actual GK420D thing which actually print a uh, printer which actually prints all four by four by four labels it comes on a roll sort of like our glue machine that thing saves us so much time versus this one but if you're shipping from a printer I'll tell you this go on eBay and look for two-sided shipping paper they're self sticky um, shipping thing so when you're put in a printer it'll print off one side of your label um, and sometimes on eBay it'll print off the second side with the description that kind of stuff 
or if you don't want to print off second side, you can just turn it around if you use one side and use the other side. So you can basically get two shipping labels from one little sheet. This is self sticky, so it peels right off and you slap it on your box. This right here will save you time versus printing on regular shipping paper because then you've got to cut the cut out your label or fold your label and tape it on and all that stuff where this thing just peels right off, slap on. Same with our, our small zebra printer up here. So we're gonna ship something I'll show you. Like I said, we don't use these that much anymore. We're more into the um, zebra label printers now. So we're gonna show you some shipping. And, and uh, if you're new to eBay and don't know how to do shipping, a lot of people don't get into eBay because they're scared of shipping. Shipping is simple. It's not hard, people make it out more than it's gotta be. So your item sold, and you see our item sold right here. So we got a little head gasket sold for $24.99. That would be in your um, awaiting shipment page on eBay, which is usually, so if you're on my eBay, let's say we're on my eBay, right here. My eBay, right? We're gonna go to selling off of here. Click selling. It's gonna show you print labels and ship. So I have three things to ship right here. Click on that going to come up with your items that people's paid and it's awaiting shipment so then we get to the head gasket which is right here we click on this print shipping label now this is eBay only Amazon is a little different we click that up it's going to ask you for weight and dimensions scale another thing you're going to need we had a couple scales around here that's the most common scale we use turn it on it's on zero Put the package on top of it that weighs 1.4 ounces so we're going to do one it's going to be one ounce so if you're in between a weight you can always round down so if it's 1.9 you can go to one ounces i'm talking ounces pounds usually the shipping is going to be the same between one pound and right before you hit two pounds now when you hit two pounds it's going to jump up to the next price so anything in between a number is fine one pound eight ounces one pound six ounces one pound 14 ounces you're fine one pound 15 ounces you're on so when you hit that two mark is when the price jump increases so that weighs 1.4 so it's a one ounce package tape measure handy too it doesn't matter you got to put your dimensions in there you can round down on that too see that package is actually six and seven eighths we're going to say six by four because it's below five six by four by one so put that in here six by four by one and we click the update button and it's going to tell us our shipping options so shipping options our cheapest one is going to be first class right here united states post service first class because it's under so first class is going to be anything under a pound 15 ounces or below so as long as it's under 15 ounces and below that's going to be a very cheap shipping option the difference look at the difference between us sending it Parcel select, seven dollars and forty-six cents. All right, first class. Click that button. Click purchase label and print. It's gonna open the label for me. I'm gonna select my printer. So you see, it's got my Canon selected. I'm gonna switch it to my Z Designer, which is my Zebra. And watch right here what happens when I, when I click print. I'll hit print. This is why I love this machine. Watch. So I print my label. Rip it off. Self-adhesive. Pulls off. I'll take that. I'll slap it on the package. And it's done. Simple. Literally, if I did this start to finish, maybe 30 seconds. Maybe. So that one's done. A little four by four. So back on this, you'll just go to your ship your next item right here. Click that. This was the tune-up tune-up kit. Thermostat tune-up kit. Ship this. Print shipping labels. Throw it on a scale. It weighs three ounces. Three ounces is already in there. I know that box size is four. By four by four, I don't have to measure that. I already know the size of that box. Click update. It's going to be first class again. Right there, it's already in first class. Two seventy-eight. Purchase label and print. Computer is going to go slow. 
Can I open my label up for me? Got my printer already selected. I'm gonna hit print. Gonna spit it out right there. Gonna rip it right off. Slap it on the box. And it's done, ready to go. So that's the basics of shipping. Um, one thing we're gonna talk about real quick is how should you ship? So to each their own, I'll tell you what works for us. You can do as you choose. Um, so I'm gonna tell you what works for us with shipping um, and I'll give you some, some hints that, that work for us. Anything heavy and bulky, it's always gonna be cheaper to ship on FedEx than United States Postal Service. We don't use UPS, that's our own personal preference. If you do, we're not knocking it, we just don't. We use FedEx and the post office. Um, on eBay, if you're a decent sized seller, you don't even have to be a big seller to get a discount, some kind of discount, but eBay will give you a discount. So we do our shipping directly through eBay on eBay products. On Amazon, we do it directly through Amazon. I mean, there's a gazillion ways you can buy stamps.com, I don't like stamps.com, stamps we tried it, it didn't work for us. We ship directly through eBay, I think I get like a 54% discount on some things, some big items. But if you got a big, bulky, heavy item, and you can't fit it in a flat rate box, FedEx is the way to go. FedEx is always, FedEx ground is always gonna be cheaper than Postal Service ground. Um, priority mail is usually gonna be cheaper than parcel post a lot of times, depending on where it goes. Like I said, it all depends on the, where, you, where your destination is. So big, bulky, heavy packages, you know, four foot tall package by three foot wide that weighs 90 pounds. Not that we ship a lot in that weight range, but for example, FedEx is gonna be 30% of the cost that the Postal Service is gonna wanna charge you. Um, so we use FedEx for big, bulky, heavy items, and we use United States Postal Service for all the rest. Um, another thing is, the Postal Service will pick up from you if you schedule it. Um, we don't, we take it to Post Office. Post Office is like a mile and a half away from us. We drop it off on the loading dock. We don't stay in line. That's done. Um, so that's the big, the big, the basics of shipping. Um, you can always do, and a lot of eBay customers are scared to do shipping on stuff. Shipping is not that hard. If it's big and you, if it's a headache to ship, you can put local pickup only and put in your listing can drop off at a local shipping store, you'll be responsible for shipping. So we sell a lot of stuff like that. Local shipping only. It could be a big piece of furniture. Somebody, it's like somebody from the other side of the country wants it. And they say, hey, um, can you help me facilitate shipping? It doesn't take much to help someone facilitate shipping. Local pickup only means they come right to you and pick it up. Or what we'll do is we'll drop it at a local shipping store, give the shipping store their phone number. They call the buyer. We've already been paid and the shipping store, the details of shipping is worked out between the buyer and the shipping store. So it just gives you a better option than not offering shipping at all. I mean, if they're willing to buy it and pay the shipping, then let them pay the shipping. If you don't want to do the work, put it on your listings. Clearly state it, local pickup only, but we're willing to help facilitate the shipping by dropping it off at a local shipping store. So the sale's over with, you just shoot them a number, hey, once you're paid, we're gonna drop this off at XYZ. Their phone number is 123. Um, talk to your local shipping store. Show local shipping store, or online auctions, we do it online auctions. Um, local shipping store, call them. Be like, hey, um, your item's gonna be $120 to ship and create. They've already bought the item from you. They already know full well they either have to pick it up locally or you can drop it off for them, but they still gotta work the shipping details out with the shipping store. Take it out of your hands, let them do the work. Let a shipping store do the work. You make the sale, shipping store does the work, the buyer already knows to expect. You get a lot of crazy questions. Well, how much does it cost to get shipping to here and here and here? We don't overcharge for shipping. We actually take a weight and a box size that's gonna fit. Put them dimensions in the listings. And we'll do a video on eBay listings and that kind of stuff in the future. This is just a basic shipping video. But we put the actual dimensions and the weight of the item beforehand. We don't pre-package it, we just guesstimate. We're, using, we're pretty good at guesstimating. And that way it's in there, it's ready to rock and roll. So if you like what you saw, let us know, subscribe, hit that bell, thumbs up. If you didn't like it, thumbs down. You know, we understand both ways. Comment below, let us know what you wanna see in the future. Short, sweet shipping video for you. Don't be scared of shipping. If shipping is the thing that's scaring you from selling online, learn it. It's not a hard process, it's simple. So many people do not refuse to sell online because they're scared of shipping. It's not that hard. 
I can train a monkey to do shipping in, in a day and a half. I guarantee you, it's not that hard. Learn what's worked for you, ask questions, it's not hard, trust me. It's not hard. Biggest piece of advice I can get you. If you're online, don't be scared of shipping. Until next time, thanks for joining us. See you next time.